You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, due to a high request, we're going to be sending music through lasers. Now, if you haven't already seen the video I did on sending music through light, this video is going to be very similar. And so basically, if you want to learn how that works and how we are going to be doing it, go ahead and click on that link in the description. So anyways, here's the new circuit I designed that I'm going to be using to power this. The laser that we're going to be using is this guy. This is a 300 milliwatt class 4 laser. Now this laser was actually donated to me by people at banggood.com. And so although they didn't specifically ask for a shout out, I'm going to be sort of giving them one right now. Now I did make some modifications to this laser after it came. When you purchase this from them, the original version actually plugs in. And so since I wanted this laser to be portable, I simply took an old drill battery I had and moved some batteries to get it down to a 12 volt battery. And then I simply wired up the positive wire from the laser to the positive of the battery, and the negative to the negative. And also just added in this momentary switch here. And this laser should be able to last quite a while from this giant battery. Now this laser is actually quite powerful, in fact here's a match without even a black dot drawn on it. And of course it can also pop balloons very easily. But yeah, I'm basically just trying to say, if you're doing something with a laser like this, please wear safety goggles so you stay safe. And when I say safety goggles, I mean actually specifically laser safety goggles to make sure that you don't go blind given the off chance that it might hit you. And then although it's not related to this video, they also sent me this multimeter. Now my old clamp on multimeter could only measure AC current. However, this one can actually measure DC and AC current just by clamping this over the wire. I'm sure it can do a lot of other really cool things, I'm just not sure how to read Chinese and that's all the instruction manuals in. So if you guys are interested in having a laser like this or this multimeter, I'm going to leave links in the description to them. Anyways, so now I have the laser connected up to the modulator. And so the aux cord which is plugged into the modulator modulator will also be plugged into a phone. And so that way, as I play the audio, it should modulate the laser to the audio I'm playing. And then to pick up the audio, I have this solar panel attached to this amplifier. Okay, now let's go ahead and test the laser to see if it's modulating correctly. As you can hear, through the amplifier, we're getting the music we're sending through. Okay, now I have myself and the laser on the other side of the room. Let's see if we can get it. Now I have noticed we're actually able to get a louder sound and the laser is more out of focus. I assume it's because it can't convert all of the energy going into it based on those few solar cells. And so when we have it more out of focus, it has more solar cells to boost the efficiency up from the energy going in. Okay, so now we have the solar panel and amplifier set up outside. And I'm going to try shooting the audio modulated laser at that solar panel from way down there. And then after this test at night, I'm going to do the same thing so we can see the difference. And then I just have my phone set up there so it can be recording while we're down there. It took a little while, but I finally got this laser focused onto the solar panel way down there. And so hopefully right now, it should be sending music from that device right there through this laser down to the solar panel onto the amplifier. And so anyways, now I'm going to go ahead and show the footage it's on the camera filming down there. Okay, now let's compare this to a test using the exact same parameters done at night. So I think from the test I noticed that it was a little bit louder during the night, but there wasn't that much of a difference at all. Now although theoretically you could send much more information per second through a laser than through something like a radio wave, it would definitely not be a good way to replace something like Wi-Fi for instance. This simply has to do with the fact that the wavelength for visible light seems to be at just the right spot for it to be affected greatly by particles. So in other words, as you would expect, something like rain, dirt, or even just debris flying through the air would all cause interferences on the system. And this was kind of demonstrated as you could hear during the first test when I'd wave my hand in front of the laser. So basically trying to use something like a laser or visible light to send data isn't that useful. Now that is of course unless you're using something like fiber optics because fiber optics actually work in a very similar way except for the light is all going through the fiber optic cables. Now something like this may be useful in the future to send large batches of data through space. However instead of using stuff on the visible light spectrum you could use things like x-rays and gamma waves because this type of radiation has much shorter wavelengths and would have much less interference from things like particles since it could just tunnel through it. Now please keep in mind this kind of information isn't traveling faster than radio waves since they're both part of the electromagnetic spectrum and everything on the electron magnetic spectrum all travels at the speed of light. It would just be able to simply carry more data at a given time. So now you know in a very similar way to how we modulated light to send data, you can also modulate lasers to send data as well. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you learned something new or enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. And if you guys have anything you'd like to see in a future video, go ahead and leave it in the comment sections below. If you'd like to see my weekly science videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so they'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. So please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode we're going to show you how a metal detector works and how you can make your very own.